Here's how the runic engine works. Every runic quick play spell has its own unique beneficial effect that also banishes cards at the top of your opponent's deck. Freezing Curses is a Forbidden Chalice that banishes 3, Flash Fire is a Pop that banishes 2, and Destruction is an MST that banishes 4. But instead of using their unique effects, you can instead use the shared effects of the runic spells, allowing you to instant fusion out any runic monster from your extra deck to your extra monster zone. You have a variety of choices of runic monsters to summon, but you're usually bringing out Hugin the Runic Wings, because when Hugin is summoned, you can discard a card to add a runic field spell from your deck to your hand. This gives you access to Runic Fountain, which lets you use your Runic Quick Play spells from your hand during your opponent's turn, and lets you draw up to three cards after you activate a Runic Quick Play spell by putting those spells from your grave into the bottom of your deck. This means that not only do you get to use your Runic Quick Play spells as if they were hand traps, you get to refill your hand and draw a ton of cards during both yours and your opponent's turns. And as a result, Runic has been used in a ton of different strategies because of the strength of its interruption, its consistency, and for the free draws and bodies it gives you. But there is a catch, because even though the Runic Engine is incredibly strong, Every time you activate a runic quick play spell, you're forced to skip your next battle phase. Because of the way the runic engine works, it's actually really difficult to play as a small engine since you want to access as many runic spells as possible to ensure that you're drawing a ton of cards per turn. So as a result, the runic engine in the TCG is usually quite big and is typically made up of two fountains, three tips, three flashing fires, three freezing curses, three slumber, and three destruction. But in Master Duel, some of the runic spells are actually currently semi-limited so you're stuck playing Two Fountain, Tip, Destruction, Freezing Curse, and Slumber. Though, no matter the format, you also have to dedicate quite a few extra deck spots for the Runic Monsters too. With most decks playing 0 to 1 Freki, at least 1 Gary and Munin, and 2 to 3 copies of Hugin. But, if you wanted to rely on even a bigger Runic Engine, you also have the option of playing an extra Fountain and a few copies of Dispelling, Smiting Storm, Golden Droplet, and potentially even a Runic Allure if you want to rely on a deck out as your main win condition. Now let's get into what the Runic cards actually do, starting off with the secondary effect that's shared by every Runic Quick Play spell. This effect lets you summon out any Runic Fusion monster from your extra deck, but only to your extra monster zone. Now, while this effect is simple, it's actually integral to the Runic strategy, because in order to fuse in your extra deck with Polymerization, you would need to fuse two Runic monsters together, which is an issue considering there are zero main deck Runic monsters. So this effect is the only consistent way of actually summoning these monsters and getting access to the rest of your engine. This is one of the key parts that makes the runic engine unique and interesting, because your quick play spells have a lot of versatility in how they can be used. When going second, your flash and fire and destruction are going to be a great way to break your opponent's board. But when going first, you can instead use them as engine pieces that get you free bodies on the field. This has made runic really appealing to a ton of different strategies that can benefit from the body that you summon. Sprite benefits a lot from having Hugin being a level 2 monster, Fur Hire appreciates the fairy typings of the runic wings, and the Plunder Patrol can use any body to link off with Plunder Patrol monsters to go into Blackbeard. The monster that you'll see summoned most of the time, though, is Hugin the Runic Winks, because when Hugin is summoned, you can discard a card for cost to add a Runic Field spell from your deck to your hand, with your only option currently being Runic Fountain. This gives you access to the most important card in the engine, and is why Hugin is the most summoned Runic monster in both combo and stun variants. Its cost is even a benefit of the card too, allowing you to discard cards with amazing graveyard effects like Nimble Angler or Nature's Sacred Tree, or even other runic cards to be shuffled back later with Fountain. But that's not where Hugin's utility ends. In combo variants, its stats made it a really beneficial body that can be used for extra deck plays in a ton of strategies, and with its most famous use being sprite variants because Hugin just so happens to be level 2. This allowed for every runic spell to be a great extender for sprite, since it puts a free level 2 monster in the field without committing a normal summon, which lets you special some of the sprites from your hand. And use Hugin for your extra deck plays, since it was the perfect level for Elf, Sprint, and Gigantic. It being level 2 also benefited Naturia a ton, as it gave the deck a lot of access to level 6 synchros with its level 4 tuners, which they could use to synchro climb into Baron de Fleur. But even stunned variants of Runic found Hugin on the field to be really useful because of its second effect, which allows you to banish it from the field to prevent any other card or cards you control from being destroyed by card effect. This makes it so that you can protect your fountain and back row from any kind of common spell and trap card removal, like Twin Twisters and Lightning Storm. Either keeping your Runic engine online, or trapping your opponent under an oppressive floodgate. And because this effect doesn't activate, it can be used mid-chain. This gives the engine access to one of its coolest plays, allowing you to chain a runic spell to the effect of your opponent's spell and trap card removal to summon Hugin to protect your back row. And finally, Hugin's third effect allows for some neat recursion, since if it's ever destroyed by battle or card effect, you have to shuffle it from your graveyard back into your extra deck. But there's no denying that Hugin's strongest effect is by far its first, as it's one of the key linchpins that holds the strategy together since it searches the most important card in the strategy, Runic Fountain. Runic Fountain is currently the deck's only field spell, and allows you to activate Runic Quick Play spells from your hand during your opponent's turn. This is already a strong effect, but its second effect is the one that gives Runics its main payoff, as on a soft once per turn, after you've activated a Runic Quick Play spell, you can target up to three Runic Quick Play spells in your graveyard, put them on the bottom of your deck in any order, 
and then you get to draw cards equal to the number of cards you put back. Fountain is the reason to play Runic. Its draw effect is absurd. Usually when you activate a Runic Quick Play spell, you're either going minus one or net neutral in card advantage depending on the effect you activate. If you're summoning out a body, you're trading the Runic spell for whatever you summon out making it card neutral. And if you activated something like Freezing Curse and again opponent's card, it's technically just a minus one. But with Fountain Up, you get to refill your hand to make up for this loss in card advantage, making it so you actually end up going plus one in this scenario while still interacting with your opponent and stopping their plays. Which means that with just a single copy of Fountain and some Runic spells, you can end up drawing six cards before you even reach your second turn, by using it to draw effect on both your turn to extend and your opponent's turn to interrupt. The best part of this is the effect actually has a ton of synergy with its first effect, allowing you to use whatever Runic spells you draw on your opponent's turn as if they were hand traps converting those free draws into even more ways to interact with your opponent and stopping them from popping off. And because every runic spell can summon Hugin, which can get you access to Fountain, the engine is hyper consistent, making it so you're always going to have access to your busted field spell. It's also a soft once per turn, so if you have multiple copies, you can potentially end up drawing six cards in a single turn, which is really useful if you happen to draw a Fountain, or if you have one in your graveyard and add it back with Gary the Runic Fangs. Because whenever Gary is summoned from the extra deck, you get to target any runic spell in your graveyard that isn't a quick play spell and add it to your hand. Jerry also can't be destroyed by card effects, and if it's destroyed by battle, you can destroy any card in the field, which is a nice bonus effect. Most of the runic engine is generally fairly recursive because of the effect of fountain, since you'll always be putting back used runic spells in order to draw cards, and Hugin can return itself to the extra deck when destroyed. But without Gary, it's very difficult to recycle your already used fountains and can potentially even cost you games if your opponent manages to run through every one of them with a back row removal. Which is why Jerry is usually a mandatory inclusion in most Runic strategies, as it ensures that every aspect of your engine is recyclable, making it almost endless. But like Hugin, Jerry is also a strong body because it happens to be level 4. This makes it a great tool for Xyz plays like Exciton and Dugares, but also makes it a very interesting for synchro strategies like Nateria, which can easily make the level 6 synchro tuner monster to then climb into Baron de Flor. Now, the other runic extra deck monsters have less utility than Huge and Jerry, but are still strong tools that can be useful in certain situations or builds. For example, in heavier runic engines, summoning Mutant lets you search for your runic continuous spell rather than a field spell, which can be used to add runic allure to banish more cards from the top of your opponent's deck. It also has a protection effect like Huge, but Mutant's effect works a bit differently. You can only activate it whenever your opponent targets a runic card or a set card in order to banish Mutant for cost and negate the activation, destroy that card. So it's not really useful against Lightning Storm, but it's a great tool to counter Cosmic Cyclone. And the life point gain can be very useful for ensuring that you're never getting OTK. Meanwhile, Frecky is probably the least useful of all of these extra deck monsters, because whenever an attack is declared involving Frecky while it's in the extra monster zone, your opponent must banish another two cards from the top of their deck. Neither player takes damage from battles involving Frecky, and if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add a Runic Quick Play spell from your graveyard to your hand. All of these effects are technically beneficial, but when compared to the other runic extra deck monsters, they're much harder to use and come up less frequently. Especially because its first effect happens to be reliant on either your opponent performing an action or use of your own battle phase to crash Freki. However, every one of your runic quick play spells, as well as sharing their instant fusion-like effect, also cause you to skip your next battle phase. Thankfully, this doesn't stack, so if you activate 5 runic spells in one turn, you're only skipping your next battle phase and not the next 5. But this still presents a really unique trade-off, and is part of what makes the runic card so interesting as an engine. With them, you have access to constant recursion, consistent powerful interruptions, and free bodies to extend. But in order to use them, you have to continuously give up your battle phase. And this is actually a huge downside. Because even in the modern era, the battle phase is one of the most important phases in the game. Because not only is it a way to end the game by OTKing your opponent, the battle phase is an important resource for removing your opponent's monsters in the field that you might otherwise be struggling to by other card effects. A Borlode Savage Dragon is going to be able to contest a Red-Eyes Dark Dragoon with the battle phase, but you're going to struggle with dealing with a lot of other card effects. Especially with the runic spells, since the likes of Freezing and Flashing both target. And because powerhouses like Zeus and Evenly Match need the battle phase in order to function, Giving it up is actually a huge sink of resources. This is why most runic variants really value cards that can act as forms of removal, since they're constantly skipping the battle phase and need some way of dealing with your opponent's monsters. This means that losing on your battle phase isn't the end of the world, but it takes some smart deck building to properly take advantage of the engine and recognize its weaknesses. In Nateria, you'll see Coral Dragon and Changing being played. In Sprite variants, you'll see Onibimaru, and other variants, you're likely to see Excited Knight to act as a pseudo Zeus. However, the deck still does have its own ways of removal and interaction in Archetype, 
and it does so quite well with flashing fire, freezing curses, and destruction. All of these are quick play spells which share the effect to skip your next battle phase and a secondary effect to summon out a runic fusion monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. But Flashing Fire's unique effect allows you to target an opponent's spell to summon monster, destroy it, then banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Freezing Curses, on the other hand, lets you target an effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of the turn, and then banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck. And Runic Destruction lets you target an opponent's spell or trap card, destroy it, and then banish the top four cards of your opponent's deck. These three quick plays act as the main interaction the engine has available to it and are the cards that you want to have consistent access to at all times, because they're going to be great ways to stop your opponent from making a board, and great when going second in order to break a board. And it's a good thing the runic decks have tools like these available to them because of the engine size. You see, because of how big the runic engine actually is, most decks had to give up deck space that would otherwise be used for hand traps and board breakers for runic spells. This would usually be a big issue, as playing fewer hand traps and going second tools usually makes the deck incredibly weak when they lose a die roll. But because flashing, freezing, destruction exists, you're not really giving up on going second tools for engine space. It's just that the engine pieces you're playing also happen to be board breaking tools themselves. And as a result, these are the runic spells that are placed in every variant of the engine, because they provide the deck with solid forms and direction that make the engine more than just a tool to draw cards. Slumber also sees play in just about every runic deck, but not because it's a stellar interruption, but because it's really easy to use its effect on the first turn of the duel. Slumber's unique effect lets you target a face-up monster in the field and protect it from being destroyed by battle or card effects one time for the rest of the turn. The monster you target also can't attack for the rest of the turn, then you get to banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Now, Slumber's interruption isn't the worst in the world and can absolutely come up if you're trying to stop a Zeus line, an OTK, or even just the battle phase effects of Kashtira. But when compared to Flashing, Freeze, and Destruction, it's a much weaker interruption. However, Slumber is still an incredibly useful tool. You see, on the first turn of the duel, it can actually be difficult to siege your graveyard with multiple runic spells because you can only ever use one extra monster zone at a time, and every runic quick play spell secondary effect has to summon out to the extra monster zone. So, if you draw Flashing, Freezing, Destruction on turn 1, you're only going to be able to use one of those runic spells since your opponent hasn't committed a monster or a back row to interact with you yet, meaning that it can be difficult to draw cards on turn 1 with Runic Fountain. Now, most combo variants usually solve this issue by clearing away the extra monster zone for XEs or synchro plays so they can keep summoning out more runic bodies. But Runic Slumber's primary effect is also useful for this, as its effect is immediately usable without your opponent needing to commit anything to the board. So you can activate a runic spell, summon Hugin, search Fountain, and now, even if you don't have a way to clear your extra monster zone, you can still activate Slumber for a draw 2, which is a boon for an engine's first turn consistency. Smiting, Dispelling, and Droplet, however, are probably the worst of the quick play spells in the engine, because their effects don't do enough as interruptions and are kind of awkward to use. Which is why, in most combo variants of runic, you'll only see them play one or two copies of these cards. Golden Droplet's unique effect lets your opponent draw a card, and then you get to banish the top four cards of their deck. This pairs well with Dispelling, which allows you to discard a random card from your opponent's hand, but only if a card is added from their deck to their hand during any of the phases that isn't the draw phase. And then you get to banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck. And then there's Smiting Storm, which just vanishes cards from the top of your opponent's deck, equal to the number of cards they control. Now, each of these spells has some kind of disadvantage, which holds them back from seeing widespread play in multiple copies. Droplet just generates your opponent advantage. Smiting Storm's effect isn't immediately useful, and Dispelling can only be activated at a specific time. But these quick play spells aren't completely useless either, and do still see play at fewer copies and combo variants because, at worst, they're just extenders with their secondary effects. But even their primary effect has a home in more deck out focused builds. Because in these builds, you want to be banishing cards atop your opponent's deck as much as possible. So even though Golden Droplet lets your opponent draw a card, banishing four cards on top of their deck becomes really valuable as it just gets you closer and closer to your win condition. The same is true of Runic Allure, the only continuous spell in the archetype that can be searched off of Munin. Allure is a continuous spell that only lets you control one copy of it, but while it's on the field, every time you activate a Runic Quick Play spell, you get to banish another card from the top of your opponent's deck, with this effect having no ones per turn. This is really useful in deck out focused Runic strategies by getting you closer to your win condition, but very rarely sees playing combo oriented Runic decks because it just doesn't do enough when compared to the Runic Quick Play spells because even Golden Droplet and Smiting can be used as a way to get your extract monsters, while Allure can be a dead card in hand if you don't already have your Runic Engine online. And speaking of getting your engine online, one of the best ways to do that is with the Runic Tip, the final card in the archetype and one of the strongest. Because Runic Tip's unique effect lets you add any Runic card from your deck to your hand, then banishes the top card of your opponent's deck. Now, this effect is obviously strong, because it acts as the key to your entire engine. If you don't want to discard a card for Hugin, or don't want to block up your extra monster zone, you can instead just use Tip to search for Runic Fountain for free. Or if you already have Fountain, you can instead use Tip to search for whatever quick play spell you need at any particular time. If you need to clear away your opponent's Arise Heart, then you can instead just add Flashing Fire, 
If you want to interrupt the combo, you can add Freezing Curses, or if they're close to deck out, you can add Golden Droplet to get rid of the last remaining cards in their deck. But as well as being the key engine piece, Tip is also extremely important because it's a great way of putting Runic Spells in your graveyard while retaining advantage, without summoning to the extra monster zone or relying on your opponent. If you have a Fountain and Runic Slumber in hand, you can activate the Slumber to summon to the extra monster zone, then use your Fountain to draw a card. But if your hand is instead Fountain to Tip, you can use that tip to search out Slumber, activate Slumber to summon, and then instead of drawing one, because you started off with tip, you end up drawing two. This just makes tip a great consistency tool, and one that ensures that you're always going to be drawing multiple cards every time you use Fountain whenever it's in hand, which, with its ability to represent any runic card, makes it the strongest card in the entire archetype, and one that just about every runic deck should be running three copies of.